Hello, thanks for taking the time to uh, watch this video. I assume that you're a homeschooler if you are watching this video, um, as the title is Homeschool Algebra Curriculum. So, uh, my name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math, and uh, if you are a homeschooler, you may have heard of our uh, brand. We've been out uh, in the marketplace for well over a decade and we have some excellent um, math uh, courses to offer mostly in the area of middle and high school mathematics. My background is I'm a math teacher. I've taught middle school math, high school math and beyond. So I've developed all the homeschool um, curriculum myself, all the instruction and everything else is done by, uh, by me. So um, with that being said, uh, one of the things that I like to do is to kind of do a lot of sample instruction. Of course, if you um, uh, check out my YouTube channel, you can literally see hundreds of uh, videos that are not part of the formal um, algebra course that I have, but you can definitely get a sense of my teaching style um, and kind of make a judgment for yourself if you think I might be right for your child. Uh, in this particular video, I just want to do a quick practice problem. Um, again, another way for you to sample whether uh, you think that you, you and your child may um, like my approach to teaching mathematics. But I have a um, a problem here that um, absolutely your, your homeschooler should be able to solve at the algebra level. Okay, and really this type of problem is kind of, uh, should be in a, uh, really mastered at the pre-algebra level, but if you have your child, uh, if you want to go and give them a little pop quiz, you might want to pause the video and see if they can do this. And um, of course I'm going to go over it and then we'll talk about a few other things from there. Okay, before I get started, I want to let you know um, that I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video to my homeschool algebra course. And from there, if you're interested in other uh, my other homeschool courses, pre-algebra, geometry, etc., you can kind of um, you know uh, find the link and, and you'll be able to branch off through the navigation on the site to uh, to find different courses. But with that being said, let's get into this particular problem. Okay, so two things here. One. Let's say you are your child did this and they have a, an answer. They say x is equal to some number. Okay, so that's that's good. Okay, so they have an answer. We're going to obviously see if it's correct here in a second. But just as importantly, and probably even more importantly, is the process they took. Can you read their work? Okay, can you see the steps to the solution? Okay, because that's really what they really need to be demonstrating. You know, from a teacher's perspective. So remember. You know, in tablet class, you know, myself, I try to teach uh, math in a, in a kind of clear and understandable way. And the best way to do that is to just take it one step at a time, okay? Because you really have to break up mathematics in little micro skill sets that students can kind of grasp and, and build up. And it, it takes time, but if they, you know, if they're able to learn these skills, these little small skills, uh, enough of them along the way, then they're going to eventually have like a real strong comprehension of, uh, of mathematics. And at the middle school and high school level, there's just so much new stuff coming their way that they really, you know, it's it, it becomes very difficult to keep up if your child misses some really important skill that they're going to need. Remember, math does definitely builds upon itself. And you, uh, sometimes you don't see the consequences of not really learning something until later uh, down the line. Anyways, I don't want to deviate too much uh, off track from this problem, but um, let's get to this. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is distribute this two thirds into this x minus six. Okay, so you don't, they don't have to show the arrows this way, but I'm kind of uh, demonstrating this. So the first step should be two thirds x, and now we have two thirds times six. So hopefully, Oops, two thirds times six over one. So three goes into six, two, and two times two, of course, is four. Or they could have just done two times six is 12, 12 divided by three is four. As long as they have this as their first step, then that's good. So you wanna see two thirds x minus four equals 10. That's really what you wanna see as the first step uh, in the solution to this problem. And at this point, we're solving a basic linear equation, and the idea is we want to get the variables on the left-hand side of the equation, uh, variable terms, and there's only one in this case. So two-thirds x is on the left-hand side of the uh, equation symbol here, so that's good. What we need to do is move this negative four and put it on the right-hand side of the equation. And the way we do that, we're going to add four to both sides of the equation. 
Okay, so this is what's going to look like this now. And then we're going to add down, okay? Kind of always kind of add down in a column manner. So we get 2 thirds x plus nothing. So that's just going to be 2 thirds x equals, now I wrote this kind of over to the side here because I know that a negative 4 plus a 4 is 0. So there's not going to be anything there. And remember, I wanted to get rid of that negative 4 on the left-hand side. But one of the main concepts when you're solving equations is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you can do whatever you want to one side as long as you do the same thing to the other side. So if I can, if I add 4 to the left-hand side, and I wanted to do that to get rid of this 4, I have to add 4 to the right-hand side. It's very much like a balance scale, right? I could put four pounds over here and the thing's gonna go this way, right? Uh, but if I put another four pounds like this, it's gonna get back in balance. Same idea in mathematics when we're solving equations. Okay, so we have 10 plus four is 14. All right, so hopefully, you know, you're, you're able to kind of read the steps of what your child um, has done. And we're at two thirds X is equal to 14. So what do we do now? Well, to solve this basic equation, we want to, there's two ways to kind of think of this. You want to divide this number in front of the variable by itself. So this is two-thirds. We want to divide both sides of the equation by two-thirds. So that's one way we, you know, um, can look at solving this problem. This will get us to the, uh, this will get us to the solution. But a better way to deal with this type of problem is we have a two, the two-thirds x. We're going to be doing the same thing uh, mechanically as what I just showed you. Okay, but the best way to handle this when we have a fraction in front of the x is just to flip it upside down. So that's going to be three halves, and then we multiply. Okay, but again, if I'm going to multiply the left-hand side of the equation by three halves, I got to multiply the right-hand side of the equation by three halves because this effectively is going to do the same thing. This is this is going to be just one, right? We're going to get 6 over 6, or just 1x, or x. And now here, I'm going to end up with 14 over 1 times 3 halves. So 2 goes into 14, 7. 7 times 3 is 21. So this is our final answer. And hopefully, you know, if, you're, if your child got this correct, if they're following along and they understand, then that's fantastic, okay? Equations, and this is what I would consider a very basic level equation in algebra, uh, something that should have been mastered in pre-algebra, but equations are such a huge part of um, the algebra sequence, okay? So when you look at algebra, we really kind of have to think of it as pre-algebra, continuing on in algebra, on, algebra 1 and continuing on even to algebra 2. So this is really like one big course that's kind of broken up because in Algebra 1, we're going to relearn a lot of the concepts from pre-algebra. In Algebra 2, we're going to learn a lot of the concepts or review and relearn a lot of the concepts from Algebra 1. And then, of course, we continue to learn more material in these uh, various courses. But this is really the foundation um, to um, high school level mathematics and beyond. So... Anyways, I hope uh, you know you enjoyed this video. Again, uh, the whole purpose here is, you know, if you're spending a little time with me, is one just to get to uh, share a little bit about you about tablet class math with you as an option for homeschooling. And the second thing is, obviously, to share a little bit of uh, math knowledge as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up. Again, if you want to check out my homeschool courses, I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. And if you just like my teaching style, I literally have hundreds of um, uh, math videos on my YouTube channel. Hopefully, you consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or, or comments about um, homeschooling with tablet class, uh, please you know leave those in the comments. And probably the uh, best uh, way to get... Um, a response from our team is just to use the contact page on our website. Again, if you follow the link in the description of this video, uh, you'll be able to get to the site. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. I wish you all the best in your homeschooling endeavors. It's definitely challenging, but there's a lot of great programs that can help you out. Tablet class, I think, is definitely one of them. So I wish you all the best. Have a great day.